moment. It's a real pleasure to be here and an honor to be a part of this event. Um, very honored to be appointed as the thematic ambassador for vulnerability and help the forum to represent the needs of the most marginalized and vulnerable of the 1.2 billion people who are living in these countries and suffering daily, living on the front line of the global climate crisis. The realities of climate change permeate their lives every single day and in every aspect of their lives within the community. From my perspective, as a mental health expert and disability advocate, I'm especially concerned about the invisible just injustice of the impact of mental health on individuals and families that are affected by disasters that are caused due to climate change. For instance, a single extreme cyclone has been shown to increase the prevalence of mental health issues in the general population by 4%, whether they were directly impacted by the cyclone or not. And for those who are additionally vulnerable due to chronic physical or mental health conditions, living in extreme poverty, being dependent on others to help communicate the needs, those who cannot access relief assistance because of challenges in mobility, those who are marginalized because of their gender or sexual preferences, and even those who are marginalized due to their religious and ethnic identities, the stakes are even higher for them. A single natural disaster can tailspin into a situation for which they may never fully recover without the right kind of support mechanisms. We already know that the loss of home and income, loss of community and social support systems, disruption in daily life and continued insecurity due to unsafe and unsanitary living conditions, as well as the fear for daily needs and an uncertain future, all due to um, the crisis uh, uh, resulting from climate change can have a compounding effect on mental health that can continue to remain with the individual even when things get better. More often than not, the greater intensity of the loss and the longer the individuals continue to live with uncertainty and live in fear, and more likely it is that this one experience will lead to a chronic anxiety, depression, or conditions like post-traumatic stress disorders. And if the individual already has a propensity for a mental health condition or has an underlying health, mental health condition or a chronic physical condition, a manifestation or increased intensity of this in, in conditions will occur, ultimately preventing the individual from living a full productive and balanced life, and becoming dependent on expensive health and social safety net programs and increasing the economic burdens on countries that can least afford them, those countries that are already economically vulnerable and vulnerable to climate change. Having said all that, I want us to also consider the actual experience of the most vulnerable communities that are part of the CBF. And I want us to acknowledge and value the resiliency, the persistence and immense tenacity with which individuals from these communities continue to bounce back and thrive despite those many challenges they face on a regular basis. The strength these most vulnerable groups demonstrate should be a guide to us. And we, in fact, need to learn from them so that we may plan and prepare for more resilient and empowered communities that can persevere and overcome hardships. In working to change the conversation on climate vulnerability, we should also open our minds today to today's youth and engage in constructive conversations with them for decisions we make, which will ultimately affect them the most. The fresh ideas, new energy, and radical ambition of youth is urgently needed in all conversations on climate change. And programs like the Global Center on Adaptation's Youth Adaptation Network that we most recently launched are an excellent example of how it can be done. Therefore, in order to adequately address the needs of climate vulnerable groups, I would like to suggest that the following agenda items of CVF be given priority. Expanding efforts to address 
health and climate change issues, health, both physical and mental, and the impact of climate change, particularly on those with mental health concerns and those with disabilities. Supporting millions of people who are forced to flee their homes and even homelands because of changing climate. Supporting billions of workers who struggle with the rising heat in their workplaces. And protecting the rights of the vulnerable everywhere, including those through the CVF call for the creation of a dedicated UN Special Rapporteur for Climate Change and Human Rights. I hope these uh, suggestions aren't too ambitious, but we have to work together in a way to reduce the vulnerability of those who are in the most tenuous situations. Thank you so much, Excellency.